Well, hello again, and welcome everyone to another Musical Monday. I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek, and today I'm going to talk to you a little about the banjo. Uh, this is my banjo. It was handmade by a man named Norris Turpin in my hometown. I picked this up back around 1975, I believe, and uh, it stayed with me low these many years. Uh, the banjo... I'll uh, just run through the parts for you real quick. This is called the drum. It's like a same material that you would see on a regular drum. And uh, you've got all these notches around here that tighten it up. Inside this part right here with the holes, that's called the tone ring. This, is, this has a brass tone ring, which means it really throws out a lot of volume. <laughs> And uh, cheaper banjos don't have a brass tone ring. The instrument's not as heavy, and it doesn't throw out as much volume. And then you've got the bridge here and the tailpiece here. And this is the fifth string tuner right here. You've, there's five strings on the banjo. Originally, the banjo had four strings. And uh, it came over from Africa, from slaves in West Africa. They brought the four-string banjo over to the Americas with them. And then somewhere in the uh, 19th century, somebody in America got the idea of adding a fifth string to it. The four-string guys tended to play with a plectrum. They did what we call a ragtime style, where you do stuff like... <laughs> I don't really play ragtime, but that's basically the style. But once the fifth string was added, then people would play what they call claw hammer style. It's also known as frailing. Now, I'm not a very good frailer. I'll show you a clip here of somebody who can frail. But I never was able to do that style. I always was uh, attracted to St Earl Scruggs, developed what we call Scruggs style play, where you just play individual notes. And of course, his most famous tune was Foggy Mountain Breakdown. <laughs> And that's the style that I always wanted to learn to play. Now, guys, I haven't picked up the banjo. This is the second time I think I've played the banjo in like 10 years. I just don't play anymore. So I'm going to be a little bit rusty on some of the stuff that I do. But uh, I think I can remember how to play good enough to make it through this video. But uh, anyway, yeah, so the banjo came over from Africa with four strings. The fifth string was added. And people who did minstrel shows would play the claw hammer style. And then in the 20th century, Earl Scruggs and others started playing bluegrass style on the banjo. Uh, today, you've got guys like Bela Fleck who have taken banjo playing to a whole new level. They play some classical stuff, Celtic, jazz, you name it. And uh, they'll try all kinds of things with the banjo. But uh, I never really ventured beyond bluegrass style. Now, uh, I'll tell you a quick story about the banjo. Um, I used to go to a lot of bluegrass festivals years ago. I mentioned in a previous video. And uh, when I went to the Walnut Valley Music Festival in Winfield, Kansas, back in the 80s, uh, well, you have to understand what these festivals are like. They're huge, okay? It's like if you've ever been to the Daytona Speedway, it's about that big, you know, and there's a main stage where the main acts play, and then you have other stages where the lesser known acts perform. And then you have places for the competitions, the 
fiddle competition will be in this building. The banjo competition's over here. The fingerstyle guitar is over here. The flat picking competition's over here. The mandolin competition's over here. They have an auto harp and maybe dulcimer. I don't. They have other competitions as well. And then they have their arts and crafts areas where you can go and buy ceramics and stuff. Even clothing. You could buy clothing at these festivals. And they have their instru instrument booths where you can look at the different uh, vendors there that uh, sell their, or luthiers, that sell their guitars, their banjos, mandolins, fiddles, whatever. They had, uh, at least back then when people sold records, they had LPs. And you could look through the LPs and, and buy them there. And they had books, instructional books, written by different people who were great at their respective instruments. So it's a festival where all kinds of stuff is set up. And you can just wander around all day and look at stuff. It's like a mall. So I was wandering around at this Walnut Valley Festival back in the 80s. And I came up on, I think it was Stelling Banjos. It might have been Deering, one of those banjo makers. They make high-end banjos. And I was looking at the instrument there. And uh, I asked the, uh, the lady at the booth, can I play this? And she said, sure. And she, and she handed me the instrument and, and the picks. She said, here's the picks right here. Because banjo players play with picks. We don't just play with bare fingers like a classical guitarist because you need a couple of metal picks on these two fingers and then a plastic pick on the thumb. So I got the banjo and I sat down and I started playing Eight More Miles to Louisville. I don't know a whole lot of tunes like some of these guys do, but I know a few and I know how to play Eight More Miles to Louisville. So I'm playing, Let's see if I can remember how to play it now. It's like... Eight more miles to Louisville. I'm playing that, and uh, a guy uh, grabs a banjo and sits down next to me and starts playing along with me. I didn't know who he was, but he knew the song, and so he starts playing Eight More Miles just like I did, only better. And then a third guy grabs a banjo and sits down and sits on the other side of me. And he's playing along with us, and this guy's incredible. He's playing harmony parts to our melody parts. And then a fourth guy grabs a banjo and sits down and joins us, and he's great. And so we're just jamming eight more miles to Louisville, and we're going around in the circle a couple of times. You, you take it. Okay, it's your turn. Okay, you play. And uh, even though we don't know each other, we're all being very courteous to one another and just having a great time. Meanwhile, a crowd has gathered around, about 50 people gathered around listening to us play. And I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not even that good. Here I am performing at the Walnut Valley Festival for free in a spontaneous jam session. But anyway, uh, we had a lot of fun. We played two or three tunes, and this went on for around like half an hour or so. And then when we all get done, we start introducing each other, ourselves to each other. And uh, I said, well, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a really a, a banjo player in a band or anything. I just like to play. And I said, uh, my name's Rod and I'm from Tulsa. This guy says, well, my name's Joe Blow and I play in a little band in Missouri or whatever. And then this guy over here, he says, well, you know, I'm Jack Smith, whatever. And uh, everybody knew who he was, I guess, because he'd won the championship there a couple of years earlier. Just a great banjo player. And then the fourth guy says, I'm John Hickman. And that's all he said. And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm nice to meet you, nice to meet you. John Hickman, I said, that sounds familiar. I said, you, do you play in a band here? And he says, yeah. I said, what's the name of the band? He says, Burline, Crary, and Hickman. And I said, Burline, Crary, and Hickman. That was the main act at the festival. Byron Burline, world-class fiddler. Dan Crary, great guitar player. And John Hickman, the banjo player. John Hickman was sitting there jamming with us. And I didn't recognize him. And he even said his name, and it didn't dawn on me who he was. And I said, Burline, Crary, and Hickman. And you're John Hickman. 
Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. And all these people who had gathered around to listen to us play, they all started laughing because it was like my most embarrassing moment. I'm the only one there who didn't know that this is the main banjo player at the festival sitting there and jamming with us. And I said, I'm sorry, I, it just didn't click, you know, who you were. <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. He was a real nice guy. And uh, he passed away a couple years ago. Byron Berline passed away too, I think two years ago. But uh, John was such a great guy, humble, unassuming. He didn't need to be the star, and he wasn't insulted that I didn't know who he was. But uh, anyway, that was kind of, you know, one of the best days of my life and one of the worst days of my life at the same time because I got to jam with John Hickman, but I was such a schmuck I didn't recognize him <laughs> until he told me what band he was with. But anyway... Uh, it, it's a great thing going to one of these bluegrass festivals if you've never been. You'll see such a mix of people. You'll see people that uh, they're just church-going Christian people that take their families and uh, they like to hear the gospel tunes played at the festival. And then you'll see hippies with drugs that show up and, and they want to hear this psycho uh, hippie bluegrass stuff. And then you'll see rednecks with their cigarettes and their beer, and they're really country music fans who like a little bluegrass. It's just a real mixture of different people from different, uh, you know, social groups and demographic groups of American culture. So I guess you call it a subculture. They all come together just for the music, and uh, they don't fight. They don't. You don't see any arguments or anything like that. Everybody's just there to have a good time, and it's it's a great experience. So, I'd encourage you to to check one out every once in a while, to uh, to see what it's like to go to a bluegrass festival and and see what I'm talking about when I talk about the different competitions and the different uh, you know performers and different knickknacks and stuff that they have to sell. But anyway, uh, that's just a brief introduction to the banjo i started playing the banjo after i saw uh the guy with the eagles bernie wasn't bernie Taupin. he uh bernie <laughs> i can't remember his last name but he uh, he was original electric guitar player rock guitarist for the eagles and he also played the banjo and then when he left joe walsh replaced him but i saw him playing the banjo on uh ABC's in concert one night, and it was, uh, he was doing. It was a tune called Early Bird, and that was the first one of the first tunes I ever learned to play because that's what inspired me to take up the banjo. A lot of people think, well, you're not really into country, but you like bluegrass. That doesn't make sense. But I didn't become interested in bluegrass because of country. I became interested in bluegrass because I was watching a rock band that happened to have a banjo player. Bernie Leiden, that was the guy's name. So uh, anyway, I, I learned to play all the, the basics, like I said, Foggy Mountain, and uh, then there's Cripple Creek. <laughs> And then there's uh, shucking the corn. And then a while back when I was doing my fiddle video, I talked about hornpipes. And, and uh, Blackberry Blossom is uh, the first hornpipe I ever learned, but I learned it on the banjo. And, and then I learned other hornpipes on the fiddle, but uh, Blackberry Blossom, see if I can remember how to play it here. Um, I don't remember how to play it, but that's Blackberry Blossom. That's the piece that I sat and practiced for about five or six hours one day, learned the whole song to where I could play it all the way through 
but it took me, I mean, just sitting there all day long working on that, tong- on that song. I broke it down, figured out how to play each measure, and then I just kept adding more and more and more, and it took me a whole afternoon, but I got it. And this is part of the whole learning process. You just have to figure out how to sit down and listen to somebody do something and then break it down piece by piece and practice it until you got it. And uh, that's a bit a big part of my musical development. I use the same approach for them learning a classical guitar piece or a mandolin tune or whatever. So uh, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I wish I was able to play a little bit more for you, but like I said, it's been so long. But uh, I do remember how to do a few things like uh, shave and haircut two bits. That. Yeah, can't see the frets that good. Uh, and then there's other little like uh, kickoff stuff like that's one uh, intro, uh, Foggy Mountain stuff off like that. That's a slide. You sometimes you start off with slides. Sometimes you start off with that's uh, called a pinch when you play two notes together like that. And there's melodic playing. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, you, you pick those things up over a period of time, just jamming with guys who learn, you know, they can teach you the tricks of the trade because they've been doing it forever. So maybe someday I'll get back into this and I'll play a little bit more for you. But uh, the banjo is a nice, wholesome instrument that uh, makes people happy and puts a pep in your step and so everybody is happy when they hear you play the banjo so if any of you are out there you have any questions you want to take it up hit me up let me know and i'll help you as much as i can thanks for watching we'll see you in the next musical monday god bless